That's exhausting. <laughs> Even thinking about it. <laughs> right guys, welcome back to MK Sports guys. Well, we're gonna get into the workshop today and have a dig around. And you guess what? You won't believe what we found on that ZZR 1100 engine, which we've been well, no engine one, engine two. Now we're on to engine number three. Stay tuned. Right, here we are standing over the Exo Booster car with a supercharger stuck on the back, as you know. Project's been in here for a, a few weeks now. Um, had a gearbox issue. You know that got sorted with RLM Racing. They sorted it out. Got the engine all bolted back together, etc. as well. And now we've had to go on with some other bits. Well, as soon as we got it all back together, done a test drive in the car, we noticed there were some issues with it. Um, when we was trying to tension the chain, there were some issues, basically this sprocket. Now you probably can't see it very well on camera, but these teeth, A, some of the tops are missing, B, they're almost curved, it's completely worn out, the teeth are sort of like a C hook almost really, you probably can't see that particularly well, and the same on the front sprocket, we had the same issue on this one, that was as well. Now I do believe this has had caused issues in the past which caused a chain to snap since I've had discussions, it's just snapped the chain and hence the damage down here, not with us, but with the previous customer. So we fitted, um, it's had a, the bearings were worn out in the uh, LSD unit, which is under there as well, which you can see, there's the LSD and sprocket and the whole drivetrain under there. So it's had a brand new sprocket. We're now gonna adjust it up. We're just sorting out the front sprocket, get the new chain on it as well, because it's done damage to the chain, it's stretched it as well. Um, so that'll be on. It's the final job then really, and then it, I think, I think we may be going for dyno then, just to get it, if I need tweaks and everything else. Um, but yeah, she's uh, certainly bright, certainly colourful, and it will stand out in a crowd. Right, here we are, MA in Dax. Uh, well, trying to get this sorted as well. Unfortunately, we've had to go again. It's one of them things where it's not quite ready for IVA. There's lots of little things to do on it. Um, we've had to strip the interior out because the fuel lines and that were all a bit perished. So we had to put new fuel lines in here because the rubbers were actually perished right away through, all the way through the tunnel as well, um, completely perished. This is off because we're into some buttons and wiring and the dashboard radiuses that were all wrong. So we had to strip the dashboard back as well. And we like looking at the wiring on the parking brakes. It's got electric handbrake. Um, a few things around the back here, didn't have a, a bracket on this when I mean, you're sorting out, which was final fitment being done on the uh, sort of battery securing it all. Um, it has got seatbelt harnesses in here that which these weren't being used, so we'll probably try and reuse these if we can. They weren't being used in any way, it just had it strapped over in a, a lap strap sort of thing. We've got fuel filler hoses and sort out. These are, some of these are a bit perished as well. Um, so it's uh, unfortunately, when a car has been sitting around for a while, they do you know, perish. Rubber does perish over a period of time. As you can see, there's a little bit of surface stuff where it's been sitting around and that. We'll get it, get it all tidied up and under the engine bay, same problem we had under here. Um, thankfully, there's clearance now, but we had to move all the engine out. This was actually hitting the chassis, the block, just down in here. It's very tight for you to see, but we've got probably five mil clearance, but before the engine was rocking and actually hitting the chassis. So we've had to do that for clearance side things as well and then we were on with some of the intake system as well that's all off now to, to sort out some filtration and that actually said no air filters on the trumpet and again new fuel lines right the way up from here all in split conduit to help weather it all as well where they've been replaced right away through the car so yeah it's quite a long list to do on this we've got to sort out the exhaust system on this side because it's noisy it's about 120 decibels you need to be 99 decibels for IVA at three quarters for your uh, maximum power rpm so way over it's like 20 times over what it should be so yeah it'll be great but we're still working through the process here getting the bits and bobs done on it there's probably about 40 items to do um, that comply make it compliant for iva but yeah even things like what you can see on the seat there no trimming on the seat you obviously you know guys i've told you enough probably on here but the 2.5 mil radius if it's got sharp edge anywhere it has to be trimmed up none of this was trimmed so the seats have to be trimmed uh, even down here, these are all sharp edges. So we've got to figure out something to do with this, but that, if you touch it, rub your hand on it, you can feel it hits it's in here. So that needs a radius on it, that's a foul. But to take all the aero screen off, because that was all failure, all radiuses, etc. Um, there was big holes here with the indicators. You can't have side indicators here, you can't have them. Uh, also, because you can't have too many indicators in the vehicle, side repeaters has to sit on the front. 
at the moment they're on the headlights and we've just got to check that these meet the five degree angle out and horizontal and vertical test which we will do once you get the car finally finished and on the ground that may have to move positions but we'll do the check on that so even down to things like here just on the vents making sure these don't have sharp it adds these sticker things on here that had a sharp edge silly little things these will have rubber covers eventually uh, to go over them as well unfortunately it's the radius test um, requirement so little things like that that you know we polish it out basically if you build one of them case it's generally in there and it gets polished out as you're building the car but some of these stuff that's a bit of a prototype this vehicle was a bit unique then you have to go through the process of making it compliant right here we are with hashtag Collins car um, it's going to be the k21 that we're doing oh, a bit of a transformation it's got glad rags on look nice color sky blue golf blue sky blue golf blue but one or the other you know we really want but we call it sky blue but it, yeah it's a interpretation of a golf blue color um so we're now we started on with the bodywork on this this has got the uh sx bodywork on it so it's got the shortened section here which is on the side panels the moldy bits as you go along nice and easy then fit the rear wing here as you can see and it's all molded into one panel it's a much nicer cleaner fit um put that in and the back panels in here all fitted nicely anodized black fuel cap fog light number plate light fuel tank with a fuel pump system in it it's a new system what we're doing um with a, it built into the tank so it's got fuel pump fuel pressure regulator and filter in the tank there and a, a fuel sender that's calibrated for the instruments because it's going to have some nice little individual instruments on this it's going to have like the five piece of set instruments in there diffs in at the mazda all brand new running gear discs all the calipers are on now on the corners here handbrake cables in all new shiny suit shiny stuff on the corners all cross steel and groove vented discs down in here which look great pop shaft and then uh joseph's on with setting out the dashboard and that now so we'll be masking it up fixing that up and uh marking it out for the design and how we're going to put the instrumentation on it as well but i mean don't do many of these colors um ben's car the cvr car was one of the last ones we did uh, probably a year after the go plus look great don't they so such a different color it really will stand out it probably doesn't do it justice on the camera so if you want to come and see it come down to the workshop and see it in the flesh
700 time, what we all move with this, where you know the story if you've been watching. So a couple of engines turn up, we was onto a third engine of choice because we found some problems with the third engine as well. In fact, come over to the head and I'll show you. Right, so on this head, we was doing a compression test, found uh, some water in the uh, in there. And then what it is, is there's a hole just there. I don't know if you can see that, just in the valves and on this one as well, another hole. It's worn itself right away through and what was leaking through on those two boards. So that was number three head gone. So we've had to basically rob a head off another one and make up one engine out of the three. Um, but again, I think we said the other week, you never know what you're buying until you start taking it apart. So what we've got on it is lots of gaskets and seals and they're all over here. So yes, it's complete sort of top end rebuild with gaskets, every gasket, O-rings, valves, stem oil seals, we've got oil filters, we've got head gaskets, we've got gaskets, gaskets and more gaskets to build this car back up now and this engine. So that's the next job. Adrian's going to crack on with that, get the engine assembled because we've got, as you say, engine number one, big hole. Engine number two was shot, the cams and the head was worn out. Engine number three, they actually had holes in the valves which leaking water, so we've had to take two heads from one thing and mix all the cams and basically make one out of three. It's exhausting even thinking about it, isn't it? So yeah, that's what's going on with this car and we'll get it finally assembled now, making all those parts and hopefully get it chucked in in the next week. Right, here we are, oh, with, oh, with hashtag Alex Car, the Black Panther. <laughs> and I was waiting for that. Yes, we love it. It's the theme of it all. So we're on with this car. It's, it, it's so little bits. It's lots of wiring that's going on at the moment. We're just uh, uh, doing a demo mock-up on the wing stays. So they've gone off and they've been bent and for this wheel and tyre combination that we're going to be using. And uh, the wing stay isn't on the car, but it's all been mocked off, gone off a paint powder coat, etc. as well. So lots of wiring going on under here and uh, also Cameron's on with the, uh, the boot box fitment. So we've been fitting this in. So it's gonna be a road track day car, this kind of thing, but it gives you a bit of storage in here with a boot box. So we're doing a final fitment of that and that will slot in just over. So it's the next job, we'll get that in because once that's in and fitted done final fitment, we can bolt on the roll cage, um, which is the FIA one. And that'll be the, one of the other jobs. All the other bits have gone off a of paint, powder coat, etc. final components. And then one little other job that we, next job we do, we're still sort of having no arm what we're doing this. We think we're gonna go with a fog light up on the roll cage and the reverse light functions are actually in these lights. So we'll be running reverse light all built into these lights, which are pretty cool because then you've got side lights, indicators, brake lights and reverse lights all in one function, which is nice, neat, tidy solution with a reflector in. So it's completely IVA compliant light all in one. How good is that? Buy it online now. Right, it's a uh, crate in time. This is what it is now. What we've got in here, we've got two Mazda donor cars completely. One in this side, one in the other. Heading off to Norway, uh, all we've got left to do on this is basically put the lid and the front cover on this. This is being shipped out. Uh, should, I think it's due in the collection any day now. So it's just those lids and side panels to put on it. They're going out to Norway. They're going to be built into chassis. Just like, similar to this one. This is cup cars though. There's two more cup chassis that are ready to go uh, now. And then they'll, they'll be heading off to uh, RLM. These are going to be fully assembled and built, ready for the Cup 200 series in the 750 Motor Club. Want to know more about that? You know, hook us up on an email here or RLM Racing or Atomic Racing if you want to know more about the Cup Car series, the cars and everything else. They've got the demo cars there. And I think they're on a event in Donington, December the 14th at Donington. They're just doing a little test day there as well. If you know more information out, hook up Atomic Racing, speak to Dave or Rich at RLM Racing as well. So talking about chassis, chassis schedule this week, it's going up there. And if you want to get yourself in the queue for next year, ready to get your cars built, you know where we are. Yes, phone call, message, email, carrier pigeon, we don't mind, send us the details. Right, that's it for another busy week at the MK Sports Cars Workshop. Don't forget, if you want to know about the Cup 200 cars, um, they've got a demo day, December 14th, where they've got a track day there. If you want to go down, have a look, speak to Richard RLM or Atomic Racing, speak to Dave there, and they'll hook you up on the details. But yeah, it's been another crazy week here. Christmas is rolling in super quick, and I can't wait for a little bit of break time. And also for 2023, what it's going to deliver. New shows heading out. I think the Melvin show's coming up. That's a new show. Stoney's gone. Melvin's back in the frame now. So that's going to be amazing. And lots of other events that I'm going to share with you next year in 2023. We're doing something a little bit different at Newark. 
So you'll have to stay tuned and find out what that is. That's it for this week, guys. Like, share, subscribe, and guess what? Yes, we will catch you next week.